Okay, can you ask it? Yeah. Oh, it's coming out. Oh, wait, up top here. All right, so watch as we install an engine. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was locked and loaded waiting to say that. Yeah. The second the light turned on the camera, he said it. So this week, we're back on the Porsche 996 Slant Nose Project. In a previous video, we pulled the engine out because there was an intermix issue with the oil and coolant. We had a lot of oil in our coolant system. It was just spilling out on the floor. We assumed the worst, but actually, we just need to replace an oil cooler. I would actually like to say that I did not assume the worst. He assumed the worst. That's true. I was yeah. using the other end of that spectrum where I'm yeah. just like, ah, oh, this is the best case scenario. And it actually was the best case scenario. It was. Anyway, we're gonna put the engine back in, get it running. We're gonna get this thing driving. We're gonna take it out for a spin. Maybe we'll actually align the car this time. Yeah, shifter. Oh yeah, and also we have a short shifter kit by Ben Auto Design, which we've been sitting on for quite some time now, and I'm actually excited to put this thing in. We didn't have an engine, so it didn't make much sense yeah. to put a shifter in it. So while Tony is getting the engine ready to go in the vehicle, I'm going to work on the short shifter. This is the Ben Auto Design short shifter. These short shifters were designed and are used by GT3 cup cars. So they're pretty sweet in the slant nose. He also sent over a carbon fiber knob for it. So I think that this is gonna look pretty sick. Fully assembled and it's gonna feel great also. That was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the stay in. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, you see, now it's even more weird. <laughs> All right, so what we need to do is pull out the center console so I can access the shifter, and then we're going to rebuild the shifter with the short shift kit. It smells good in here. It does smell good in here. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Get out of my swamp. Jeez. Old connectors, man. Actually, I kind of wish I owned a swamp so I could say that. And it actually be true. Just imagine, like, the power you, that you, like, I would feel very powerful. If you just, like, <laughs> get out of my swamp and have an actual physical sign that says, get out of my swamp. <laughs> it would be a good thing for everybody involved. Well, me, mainly, but. So, you pull out two screws so you can get access to this panel. You remove this panel, and there's more screws holding it down. There's so many layers, like an ogre. And again, I really want a swamp. <laughs> so this is how the shifter works on a 996. The engine's in the back, transmission's in the back. You have cables that run from the shifter to the transmission selector on the transmission itself. Now, if I rock it side to side, this cable's actuated. And if I push it forward and back, this one's actuated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, dis I'm going to disconnect these cables, unbolt this housing, pull it out, and then we're gonna go over to the bench and we're gonna rebuild it with the sh short shift kit, slap it back in, and uh, hopefully it works right and I did it right. Time to take the engine and put it over there. From that cart onto this cart. Yeah, we're just transferring from cart to cart. Seems kind of redundant and not necessary, but it is necessary. This is the magic cart, and that's just a regular cart. That's like the half magic cart, because it goes up. It's not full articulating. It's levitating. <sighs> that cart is this close to levitating, guys. <laughs> Shut up, Amos. <laughs> don't, don't laugh at Tony's jokes. Why Amos will always be my favorite. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I'm losing so many points today. I love how we're doing this like against the slant nose. Yeah. Like we have all this room for activities and we're like, yeah, we're right against the bumper. This is like against Tony's like prerogative and normal. I know it's my best chance to, you know, hit Brian with the trans because he will put his body between. I definitely will. And the, and the car. Oh my gosh. I was like, what? Is that power steering fluid leaking out or what? No, that's coming out of the coolant system. Yep. That's why we're gonna do the other fun part of this video. Flush out the uh, coolant system with our all right. sweet rig right, we have. Right, hold on. When in doubt. Here we go. That's better. 
<laughs> That's a good noise. <laughs> That really does sound like my knees in the morning. I got my watch, Tony, do you work drink? <laughs> mm. It's in the extra need more of health, so. <laughs> so the issue that we were dealing with was an oil coolant intermix. We had lots of oil in the coolant, and we were really fortunate in that the problem was oil cooler. A lot of the German manufacturers use these, so oil goes in one side and out one side, and then coolant the other way and then that just lets the coolant cool the oil. But the problem was that internally the old one had failed so that the oil was going into the coolant. We replaced this and our problem is gone. Is he yelling at me? I hope not. Too late. He, he wants to watch me work, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, wait, he's working and I don't have my coffee yet. Yeah, I, oh, I gotta do my Tony impressions. Yeah. When Tony comes over to the body shop when I'm working on something, he comes in and he's like, hmm, that's not what we discussed. <laughs> I was envisioning, like it's good, but I was envisioning a little bit more that way. Like I always say, like, it's good. Yeah, Right. he does yeah. the, he does the, like he's talking to his like kid thing where it's like, yeah, you did a really good job, buddy, but it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> What's coming out of that, Tony? Like all the engine fluids out of one container. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. I think it had one too many. <laughs> yeah. Yup. That's what happens when you mix too many liquids together. <laughs> See, what happened was, I should have had the oil before the coolant, not the coolant right, before right. the oil. Yeah. Yeah. That's before how that works, right? <laughs> Let that fill up. compactors on the detention level. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> so I'm pulling the thermostat off because we have a different thermostat to throw in. Well, the housing rather. Because the thermostat inside is going to block any flow. Almost is that temp, obviously. So we're throwing in a different thermostat housing that has no thermostat and we have fittings to go to it so we can pump bilge cleaner through it, which will get rid of all the oil and other junk related from that intermixing problem. So I gotta pull the thermostat off. Pop it off. I think I have all the bolts. Is this gonna like rain on me? Probably is. Probably something gross. Yeah. Oh my gosh, are we ready for some soup? It's like that like Reese's peanut butter uh, sauce you can put in like Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a neat, neat prank on your friends. <laughs> you already know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Pulled out, there's a the thermostat. Here's the non-thermostat one. We're gonna slap in real quick. And uh, hook up the old bilge pump. Ready? Oh, I'm ready. Ah, hang on. It's coming out from somewhere. Uh oh. From the gasket? Yeah. Did That's you put a gasket cool. in there? Yeah, I did. Okay. But it's the reused one. Yeah. Because that's now, what we had. Um, it was fighting me going on. Yeah. Oh, yep, there's the problem. What is it? The gasket did turn on itself at the top corner. That's why that bolt wouldn't go in. There you go. Gets to come out. Oh, yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> I've never done that before in my life. I'm just saying, like, I've done so many of these I gaskets. Mean, if you were gonna do it, this would, I guess, be the time. <laughs> we were reusing it, and I'm just gonna bend it back, mm -hmm. and it'll be fine for this right. scenario, right? You're a metal shaper. Just all right. That's tightened down. Now just gotta take care of your clamp. My clamp. <laughs> right, yeah, the one you forgot. I think we both forgot it, but it's yeah. It's like your son, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what your son did today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little pump that could. You know what? 
as it sinks and sitting against the bottom. There it goes. No. The sauce! Oh, now it's really peanut buttery. Yeah. Mm. I was gonna say, it doesn't look too bad, but yeah, there it is. Yep, there it is. Swamp water. Ah! Get out of me, swamp! <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the water for your new... Oh! For your new swamp. My new, my new swamp will not be uh, <laughs> ecologically... Uh, <laughs> no, friendly. Friendly, no. Yeah, the EPA would not approve of my swamp. <laughs> So right now, we've gone through maybe like three or four five gallon buckets of water changes to flush out the system. And now I'm just circulating water in circles throughout the system. And you can see that the peanut butter on top of the water is not too bad now. Um, it might be time to switch over to build cleaner, I think. You can, you can drink that, right? It's definitely water. Now this is a sludge bucket. Don't drink this. <laughs> That's all the sludge that we skimmed off the top of the pulling. Yeah. This 1988 911 Cabriolet has had a bit of a rough life, as you can see, with a nice oxidized paint. Also, there was a, a hole burnt in the top, and it was sitting outside for a while, so the inside of the car is disgusting and moldy, and Amos has been working on it lately. Look at that interior. I gotta remove the seats, and they won't move because, well, electrical things don't like water, and they're rusty. I got the driver's seat out. I'm getting ready to cut through the top of the passenger seat here, Ooh. so I can unbolt things. So. <laughs> that crime scene. Yeah, things you don't want to do to an expensive car. Maybe you don't want to. Do. Well, <laughs> you know, most people shouldn't do. Mmm. There we go. Oh, look at that! Man, I think the springs are all rusted. Yeah. Now I can get down in here and unbolt the actual seat from the frame, and then I can cut things out. There we go. Don't we'll read that. The best part is what Amos found in the last seat. Look at this. Look at this guy. I got, so we got Bruce Banner, and he turns into the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. More of the story is. Uh, if you're gonna use a fire extinguisher, make sure you use, use a clean green fire extinguisher. Yeah, this is unsightly. <laughs> anyway, back to our unsightly mess. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what we're doing with this whole setup is we are drawing clean water, what was once clean water, with bilge cleaner solution in it with a pump. We're pumping it into the engine. It runs through the whole coolant system and then comes back out and into the bucket. We were originally running it into its own bucket until we got the worst of the mess out. And then we were cycling it and let the, letting the residual oil float to the surface. It was pulling from the bottom until we got to a point where it wasn't really pulling much more oil out. So now we're ready to drain this out again and then we'll close the system back up and run some more solution through it um, till we get it all out and then we'll put coolant back in. world's best oil. I'd, I'd drink this for the right amount of money. <laughs> would you, Tony? No, what is the amount of you, money you were gonna drink for? the sludge earlier for $50, oh, well. but you wouldn't drink clean, <laughs> driven DT40? I was, well, it was driven DT40. It was, see, you prefer <laughs> post-process. Yeah. Like, you wanna like mama bird it to you from the from the slant nose, not, not, not straight from the bottle. In case you're wondering how many bottles of oil it takes to uh, get a 911 Roadworthy. This is a vacuum filler for the coolant system of this 911. Now this is a gener generic one, not specifically for this 911, but if you are ever putting coolant into a 911, you're gonna wanna use one of these. You, it's pretty much physically impossible to put coolant into the system and not get air into it without one. Aren't they air cool? <laughs> Get back in the office, Tony. It's a 911. It's a 911, they're all air cooled. <laughs> is that Amazon? No. It's like a dog with a bird going. Is that Amazon? You don't understand what they did to me. So I'm putting in just plain water right now. 
we just need to not we need to not forget that it's plant watering here because it's still winter. However, because we still want to keep flushing out all the peanut butter sauce that's still in there. So it driving around and warming up and such initially, at least running on the lift will help with that. And then we'll pop that system back open again, drain it out, put the actual thermostat back in, and then put real coolant in it, and then we should be good. So many steps. <laughs> We're not in gear. No, that's gear. That's gear. It's not gear. This new shifter is awesome, dude. It feels so good. I know you guys can't feel it in video. <laughs> I won't try to explain it, but it feels good. All right, let's see if it wants to do the thing. There's one issue. I think the throttle cable could drive by like the actual wire and not like electronic. I think that's routed wrong because the throttle body is on return the whole way. Yeah, there's a little gap right there. A little gap right there. It's supposed to be going like to there. But it's not. So we ran into a little bit of a problem yesterday that sent Tony home, essentially. <laughs> our slave cylinder basically self-destructed and it ruined our driving day. Yesterday was the one day of the week that it was really nice and sunny out. It was like, what, 60 degrees outside or something stupid? And now it is raining and it is cold. But the new slave cylinder is here, which I was going to hold up just now, but it's not in my hands. Stay right there. The new slave cylinder's here. To replace this one. That's dead. So we're gonna slap that in, and maybe this rain will let up and we'll be able to go drive around. Maybe I can convince Tony to let me do some donuts in the slant nose. It's, it's, it's raining and wet, so. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Yep, I think we definitely need some uh, fender liners here. We're picking up the whole quarry back here. Sheesh. So I'm gonna pop the thermostat housing off here, put the thermostat back in after draining the water bilge cleaner concoction, and we'll be good to go. Also, if you're new here, this exhaust is 100% temporary and we know it sounds terrible. We just wanted to make sure we could drive the car without burning up and you know, any of the body work. Because eventually, we will be fabricating a cool exhaust for this. We really appreciate all your comments about what you would do with the English wheel if you won one. That English wheel. And we came up with a winner, Paul Edwards. Thank you for commenting. 
and you are the lucky winner of, not this one, but the uh, still in a box, mini English wheel from Eastwood. There were a lot of great comments. We picked it at random. Um, Paul, we hope you do great things with this tiny little wheel. No pressure. <laughs>